So we thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. And we pray this uh, morning for your word to come to us. Let your word come alive, Lord, in our hearts. Uh, we pray for fresh vision this morning. I commit myself to you, Lord. Pray for fresh anointing to share what is on your heart. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, so starting with, um, it's going to be a little bit of a message, but also an announcement. So this 2024, we've been doing things very differently. So when we started in, okay, we'll wait for everybody to put their phones on silent. Bonnie has kindly reminded us of that. Okay. So January 7th, we, January 7th, we, uh, in the first services of the year, I spoke about the Sabbath year and I felt that was God, what God was saying to us. Didn't know exactly what that meant because after that, the rest of January, we had this 21 days of prayer. We prayed 21 every day for, for 21 days, minus the Sundays. And that month carried on as usual. We had Sundays at Carol's place. Uh, I gave sermons. It was a normal month, but we were having this 21 days of prayer, wondering what God was saying about the Sabbath year. And... Uh, on February 11th, again a regular service at Carol's place. I shared about what God said about the Sabbath year and after that we said that Carol's home was going to get a rest. The same thing was happening in other cities as well. And there would be services at different homes, which is what started after that. Then the next thing that happened was February 14th to 30th, we had Lent devotions for 40 days, again minus the Sundays. No, Feb 14 to I think March 30th, we had, you know, every day minus Sundays, we had 40 days of devotions and prayer for the month of Lent. And of course, we were meeting in different people's homes on Sundays. We had sermons as usual. Services were normal, except that they were in different places. Then from May 10th to 19th, we had 10 days of prayer leading up to Pentecost. And by that time, we had almost, I don't know, 40... 21, 71 days of, 71 evenings we had met for prayer in the first five months of the year. Okay. In June, something different again started to happen. We had these electronic city visits in Bangalore, where the Bangalore group went. Anila and I went from Bombay. Renel and Nimisha went from Pune. And we were prayed over by people there. And there was this, uh, it was followed by, a sermon that I did in all three cities at, in different Sundays of June. Anybody remember the name of that sermon? You know, there is a cloud. The sermon was there is a cloud. I felt led to share, share it in all three uh, services in all three cities. And following that, we had 10 days of prayer. I called it July prayer. All the three cities had 10 days of prayer. And following that, what we did was we shifted into showing the revival videos. Okay. The aim was to soak in these revival stories. Uh, and from July to September, we've not had sermons except for, I think, one Sunday. We've had these revival videos. Okay? And I know that in, there's been some controversy maybe about seeing these videos. And I'd like to say that more than anyone else, I have suffered because my ministry is to teach and preach. And God has not let me do a Bible study this year. And then sermons also stopped. So it's been, it's been more difficult for me than for anyone else. But just trusting God, he's saying, this is what I want you all to do. So we did that. We did the revival videos. After the 10 days of July prayer, Bombay continued with July prayer. The other cities did not. But we continued having July prayer through the month of July. And then... Uh, the Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, then that shifted to mornings and evenings, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evenings. And then now we've gone to Friday worship as well, which, which is physical, while the others are by Zoom, physical, because the sense was stretch yourselves, challenge yourselves, do more than you normally do, and that's what started happening. One other thing that happened in July, August, September was we could have services at our home which we could not have after the lockdown. We've not had a service in our home for various reasons, but I felt that was also significant. So 
you know, so all these different things, different seasons and different things were happening. And we were just, we were just obeying God, really. We did not know. And it, it, in other cities also it was happening. For example, when we were doing different, uh, different homes, at one stage for one season, what they were doing was the, the men and the women separated and had separate services in Bangalore. And they said how impactful that was. You know, when they, when they said, let's do that, actually I suggested it to them. I felt God was saying to do it. Uh, they just obeyed and did it without realizing what, how it was going to be. And they were, you know, later on the testimony was that those times were so, were so good, especially for the women, the time that they got just with themselves without us pesky men around. It seems that they were very blessed by those times. All right. So we come to the month of October, which is starting in two days. Yeah. Uh, and God is speaking for the month of October as well. I don't know what he's going to say about November. So I'm just going to share about October. The announcement is this. The announcement is that highway is taking a break in October. No Sunday services. Okay? That is the announcement. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to go and attend other churches for the month of October. Okay? And this is something that a long time ago I read. There's a church. I forgot the name of the person, the church, nothing I can remember. But once a year, for one month in the year, they would just close down their church and say, go and attend other churches. And then they would continue after that. Okay? That thing came into my head and somehow I thought, October, this is what we have to do. Okay? I'll share a little more later, but let me share the, the word for this month. This is the announcement. The, the word for this month is like this. Okay, it's, I'm calling it a time for gleaning. Okay, a time for gleaning. And when I shared this with the other two cities, it was astonishing that just that day or the day before that, Rinal and Rahel, that is Pune and Bangalore, had actually used that word gleaning, which we barely use. Who uses the word gleaning for anything? But they actually used that word in some context to do with the church. It was quite, it was really quite strange, but also confirming to me because that word just popped in my head and I felt this is what God wanted to share. Okay, let's go to one of the Sabbath passages, which I, which we looked at when we looked at the Sabbath year, Exodus 23 verses 10 to 11. Okay, it says, for six years you are to sow your fields and harvest the crops, but during the seventh year let the land lie unplowed and unused. That is the Sabbath year principle. Yeah. Then the poor among your people may get food from it, and the wild animals may eat what is left. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive groves. So we know that what, what we learned at the beginning of the year. No reaping or harvesting in the Sabbath year, the seventh year. Now please understand, it appears that Israel never did this. They never trusted God enough to do this even once. Okay, But that is what God had prescribed in the law. No reaping or harvesting. Whatever was there was left for the poor and needy. Now whatever was there was not wild weeds. It was still happening from six years of planting and sowing and reaping and all. There was something growing. Yeah. It was still the fruit of the of six years of labor. It was just that there was no reaping, there was no harvesting, there was no sowing rather. And but whatever was there, the poor and needy could eat. The person whose field it was didn't need to eat from that because they had stored, because there was going to be enough from the previous year. There was such abundance from the previous year. Okay. So this was a concern for the poor that you saw during the Sabbath year. But actually this concern for the poor was reflected in every harvest. Okay. In what? In the principle of gleaning. In the principle of gleaning, this concern for the poor and needy was reflected in every harvest, not just in the Sabbath year. So Leviticus 19, 9 to 10 and 23 verse 22 is a repetition. I'll just do 19, 9 to 10 where God tells them, when you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am the Lord your God. Okay. What does gleaning mean? The word actually simply means to gather. It's not some technical term. It sim simply means to gather, but in this case, who was gathering? The poor and the needy. Okay. 
gleaning was for the needy, but it also prevented greed. It was telling the owner of the field, you don't have to maximize, collect every single piece of grain. Do your harvesting. If something falls on the side, leave it. The very edges, leave it. You don't have to take everything. Okay? It's again the whole principle of God is your provider. And if they had trusted God in the sixth day, they would have got enough for actually two and a half years. But unfortunately, they never trusted God. But every year they were supposed to trust God. He's going to give you enough. No need to take every last bit of crop that is there. You can leave it for the poor and the needy. So it prevented greed, but it also provided for the needy. However, the poor and the needy had to put in the work. It's very important. This was not welfare state. It was not entitlement. It's not what the, what's happened today is just a travesty of what God intended. You were poor, you were needy. You could go and work and collect. Okay. But the but so the principle was if you have leave something for the poor and needy, if they have if they're going to take the trouble to work, they will be able to provide for themselves. Okay. Don't be greedy and take everything so there's nothing left for the poor person. So that so that principle was that thing was called gleaning, where people went and gathered what was left over or left behind. And God is saying to us that October is a month for gleaning. This October, not every October. This October is a month for a month of gleaning. He's telling us three things. First, God is calling us to recognize our poverty of spirit. Who gleaned? Those who were poor. He's saying, recognize your poverty of spirit and desire nourishment. Okay, and this will require humility. Okay, so I'm saying go to other churches, not because we are a better church, but saying, I am poor of spirit. I want to be nourished from this place. That's one. Okay. Secondly, God is sending us to other fields, that is other churches, to glean or to gather spiritual food for ourselves. Okay. And thirdly, he is promising to satisfy our souls and spirits if we will move in obedience and do this. Okay. So if highway is not meeting for four Sundays, doesn't mean that you sit at home. It means that you go and you glean and gather something for yourself over these four Sundays. Now, uh, I said God is promising to satisfy. Okay? There's only one example of gleaning in the whole Bible and that is the story of Ruth. Okay? And in chapter 2, we know the story. Uh, Naomi has come back says, call me Mara because I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm unfortunate. I'm not, I'm not, Naomi means what? Blessed or blessed and bitter. Yeah, you know, so she says just, you know, she's so upset. But Ruth has come with her. They are living in utter poverty. Ruth says, okay, let me go and glean because that is what, how they could be provided for. The harvest season was there. She goes to glean and of course, by God's providence, she lands up in Boaz's field. Boaz is a kinsman redeemer. He is also a very nice chap. Okay. He sees how hard Ruth is working. He also knows about how good she has been to Naomi. And so he tells her, you stay in my field, only don't go to any other field where you may get troubled by the harvesters. Stay in my field. He even tells the harvesters, please, you know, throw some of the nice crop so that she can pick that up also. Okay. Long story short, the whole harvest season, she gets such an abundance. She's provided for, like Naomi is so surprised, wow, how do you collect so much? And that happens throughout the harvest season. And it is followed by God actually get, bringing Boaz and Naomi, uh, Ruth together. They get married. Okay. So God blessed Ruth and Naomi, Naomi with provision throughout the harvest season. And then God blesses Ruth with a husband. That is Boaz. He eventually blesses Naomi with a grandson. And Ruth eventually becomes the great grandmother of King David. Okay, so such abundant blessing as a result of what? Of gleaning. Of just deciding to go and do that. Do what the poor people had to do. Yeah. And I thought and God brought that story to my mind saying, listen, I'm sending you all to glean. And just like Ruth was so abundantly blessed. 
I'm going to abundantly, abundantly bless you if you just move in obedience. So what, what happens this October of the Sabbath year? Highway is going to rest on Sundays. We already gave Carol's home a rest. Now we're giving highway service itself a rest, which basically means Anila and me a rest, I suppose. Okay? We're not, uh, we not having service on Sundays, but we are going to glean from other churches saying, listen, we're not going like we, you know, you're not going to the church, you're not going, you're not, so I'm saying this, we're not going to the other churches to see, oh, what can we do better in highway? I'm not interested in that. Okay? We're going to other churches to glean, to gather spiritual nourishment. Okay? And I believe God is saying that you are, he has something wonderful in store for each one of us, just like he had for Ruth. Way beyond what she would have expected is what she got as a result of going and gleaning. Okay? So what am I saying about this month? We want to get out of our comfort zones. At the end of the day, highway has become a comfort zone for us, which is fine. You have local churches where you gather and we build each other up and all that kind of thing happens. But this month we are going out of our comfort zones. So don't go to a place that you are comfortable with. There is no point to that also. Okay. I can think of people saying, I will just go and sit for four Sundays in All Saints Church. Okay. Yes. Mayor, see, mayor thought of that only. Okay. okay. So you want to, you want to gather. Okay. So pray about it. Where is God sending you? together. Okay. Anil and me, two of our Sundays, we're not even going to be in Bombay. Okay. We're going to Delhi to attend one church over there, which apparently Anila says is really happening. So we're actually going all the way to Delhi to attend that church. We're going to, with the Pune group, we're going to go to Mukti Mission. They have a service on Sunday. So we're planning things like that. Mukti Mission is actually five and a half hours away from Bombay. So and the other two Sundays, we don't know yet. Okay. You could go to four different churches if you feel led to do that. You could go to one church for all four Sundays because you feel that that's where you're receiving. Okay. Ruth started off thinking she would go to different fields. She ended up sitting in one field. You know, so there's no, I'm not, there's no hard and fast rule at all. But you step out of your comfort zone and you go to a place where you are, you want to, with that, with that desire to glean, that desire to gather and I have no idea you know so for example uh, Ryle mentioned she said that somebody said aren't you scared that you lose people well if if we lose people because they go to a church and it's so nice that they feel they're growing there okay, okay. or you or some young some young girl goes to Alicia goes to some church and she finds a guy over there okay that's fine what can I say? Or oh, Kevin goes and finds a girl somewhere and we never see him again. Okay. That's okay. The point is you want to grow, no? You want your people to grow. We, we, are not, we don't want our church to become big. We want people to grow. Yeah. So you can go to one church for four Sundays and be blessed. You can go to four different churches and be blessed, whatever it is. But, but just go. Get out of this get out of your comfort zone and I really believe like God, I feel, believe God has said like he did for Ruth, he has something wonderful in store for each one of us. Okay? So that is the vision for the month of October. Okay? Our midweek meetings are going to continue because I feel God has really put us, given us a momentum. Our Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, mornings, evenings, Friday worship, which is physical, I don't know whether we'll continue in Okolaba, meet somewhere else. That's I'm, I'm not sure yet. We just pray about it as usual. But uh, yeah, we want to. Con it's not that we are all not going to see each other for the rest of the month. We are going to. I mean, those opportunities are there for us to gather, whether online or physically. And then the next time we meet on a Sunday will be November third at camp, actually. And interestingly, Pune will also be meeting for the first time November 3rd at their camp, which is a different, another, they're doing it at, an, at uh, Pashan, I think. Yeah, Pashan. They're, they're meeting at Pashan. We are going to be in Alibag. And uh, Bangalore is also going to have a kind of a camp and they're going to meet again on 
November 3rd. So that is the October plan. Any questions before I pray? Or is it clear? Excellent. Okay, let's pray. You know, Rahel had made some prayer points that they're doing there for the season. Let me just let me pray those points. Okay, come, let's pray. And Lord, I thank you for every word of prophecy, encouragement, and instruction that you have given to us in this Sabbath year. Thank you, Lord, for how you've guided us, Lord, month after month, season after season. Lord, I thank you for the churches in Bombay and maybe other cities that we can go to as highway rests on Sundays. I pray, Lord, for each one of us here, Lord. I pray for humility, that we would recognize our poverty of spirit. Lord, I pray for spiritual hunger, Lord, that as we go out into the city in this month of October, that we will be really hungry and thirsty, Lord, for what you want to give us. I pray, Lord, that we would put in the work to glean from other churches, that we will step out of our comfort zones, that we will go with uh, open hearts, Lord, uh, just open to what you have for us, Lord, and that we will receive, Lord, over these next four Sundays, we will receive whatever you want to give us through this time, uh, spiritual food, fresh revelation, a fresh infilling of your spirit, even setting, even uh, new relationships, Lord, new networks, new connections. Just whatever you have for us, Lord. We believe, Lord, like you blessed Ruth, you are going to bless each one of us abundantly beyond what we can ask or imagine as we step out in obedience. So I say, come Holy Spirit, I, I pray that you will... Uh, Stir each one of us, Lord. Envision us, empower us, encourage us. I pray that through this week, Lord, and through this month, you will show us each one, Lord, where you want us to go, Lord, and uh, where you want us to glean, Lord. And I pray this will be a really fruitful month, Lord, beyond our expectations, because uh, you have appointed it, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now, a couple more things I thought of. You can go alone somewhere. You can choose to go in small groups. You know, you can talk to each other and say, let's let's do this. Let's go to this church this Sunday. Let's go here. You know, whatever you feel led to do. If you're feeling, oh, I don't know who, who to go with, just contact Anila or me and we can, you know, say, okay, this group is going here. Or we are going here. Why don't you join us? So that we don't feel alone, for example. Yeah. But uh, let's really lay hold of this this strange thing that God has called us to this, this month and see where he takes us.